Welcome to the Okavango Delta in Botswana. We're now in the dry season, so we haven't got the full amount of life that you do get here. But the Okavango Delta is a spectacular and beautiful World Heritage Protected Area of Botswana. It's World Heritage Protected for a number of reasons. One of which is most deltas are the mouth of rivers flowing into the sea. But the Okavango River doesn't flow into the sea. It goes into the middle of Botswana. It disperses through 18,000 square kilometers of this delta and vanishes. It is home to an amazing amount of bird life and it's an incredible piece of World Heritage Protected nature. You could certainly go more wrong than a boat ride in dusk and sunset on the Okavango Delta while trying to spot different bits of bird life and megafauna. No matter how beautiful the Okavango Delta is and the bird life and the scenery, which is spectacular, if you want megafauna, you need to go to the Chobe National Park in northeastern Botswana, right on the border with Zimbabwe. I have never seen more elephants coming as close to us as I have in the Chobe National Park. The hippopotamuses were so plentiful they looked like rocks in the river. The giraffes so tall they stretched to the sky. It's an astonishing place to go, the Chobe National Park. And then jump across the border to Victoria Falls just for goodwill. There are a number of tribes that make up of the people of Botswana. One of the more important is the San people. And the San people are one of the oldest continuing living cultures in the world. Not as old as indigenous Australia, but getting up there. The San people are sometimes called the Bushmen, although that is considered in many circles a derogatory term now. They have the clicking language that's well known if you're a fan of the Wilbur Smith books. And a morning walking out with the San people in their territory, in their land, is a real pleasure. Botswana itself is an unusual African country. It's a couple of million people. They were squeezed between the British colonialists, the Boers, and the independent capitalist colonialists like Cecil Rhodes. Botswana somehow managed to survive and in 1964 was given its independence. But in 1964, Botswana was one of the poorest countries in the world with less than $200 per person per year, annual GDP. But in 1965, they found diamonds. Now, if they had have discovered diamonds in 1963, I wonder if they would have got independence in 1964. Unlike a lot of countries that suddenly get this huge resource boom, Botswana did not squander it. Three presidents committed themselves to two terms and handed over at the end of each of their terms. There was no autocracy built here. There was no huge amounts of corruption, as you see in many other countries in the world that have been cursed by resources but not know how to build them. What they have done is lifted annual per person GDP from about $200 a year to about 12 or 13,000, making it one of the wealthiest countries in this region. It is a good mid-level economy with a stable government and it's a model for Africa. It's a country that should be congratulated. It's a country that should be followed. So Botswana seems to have got it right. It's an island of political stability. They seem to be managing their resource uh, endowment well. They seem to be looking after their natural environment and they seem to be looking after their natural customs, peoples and traditions. So Botswana, it's a country well worth visiting.